Lee Catherine Bonner, welcome to North Carolina Now. Thank you, I'm excited to be here. Now you are a third generation beekeeper and in recent years there has been, you know, as far as bee populations are concerned, a decline. What is causing all of this? There's a lot of factors that are causing the decline. Um, my undergraduate thesis was actually on this and uh, my, my biggest concern is just that we've oversaturated gene pools by, um, we want, everyone wants the calm, happy bee that makes a lot of honey. Um, so the gene pools are very similar across developed countries now, which has allowed um, other like parasites like the varroa mite and diseases and um, chemicals to have much harsher um, you know, implications on the bees than there used to be. So, uh, you know, just building up healthy bee populations is something that I think is really important and can help the overall problems that bees are having. Now, you started a company called Bee Downtown, which is actually in downtown Durham. Yes. Tell us about the mission of your company and how you are encouraging people, as you say, to think outside the beehive. Yeah, so Bee Downtown is, um, is really about education. And what we do is we put in uh, clear beehives at storefronts um, in different, different companies around, around the nation. It started in Durham. Our pilot program is at American Tobacco. And we have our first clear hive at Burt's Bees World Headquarters in Durham for people to come by and look at. And then we also have rooftop beehives. And it's all about teaching people about the importance of bees, the problems that they're facing, and while at the same time providing progressive marketing um, uh, tools for different companies that want to be environmentally friendly and also draw customers into their space. And of course when people think of a beehive per se they usually think of something that is enclosed but you yes. can't see it. What is a clear beehive? A clear beehive. So our, our hive at Burt's is um, it's just so this is a frame um, and there's six of these that sit just one on top of the other and um, it's just the bees live on these frames and it's completely clear so you can peer into the world of the honeybee in the hive um, and so it's just it's kind of like a sneak peek that most people don't ever get to see and it's so that uh, you know children and families can come out and and look at bees and get excited about them and have that connection to you know rural agriculture where their food comes from as well as something fun and educational to do at the same time. Okay, so in addition to the clear beehive, you also brought some other items with you, I guess, yeah. without the bees. So yes. tell us how these items work, and especially in the efforts to try to increase the honeybee population. Yeah. So this is kind of like a, a deconstructed hive. Um, so this is a deep where the, the bees usually live, and it's just a bee box. And then um, the, the lid is over there. So what you do is you actually stack boxes on top of each other. Uh, so you've got bees, and then you've got another box that's for your honey and as the hive gets bigger and the bees grow in numbers, uh, you can have up to like 80,000 bees in a, in a healthy hive. So that's the lid for, that's a fancy lid. Uh, but then we've got some of the Bee Downtown honey that we've extracted from our hives. And that is just a bottom board that uh, the bees land on when they walk into their hive. And then we have a smoker, which is, you know, uh, it's, this is what most people associate with, with beekeeping. And uh, you stuff it with pine straw and light it on fire and you literally uh, smoke all you put smoke on the hive and it calms the bees so that the beekeeper can go into the hive and work it without getting stung. Now when you when you do the smoke uh, compared to like other bees are most bees kind of like very active or they're kind of docile? How do you describe yeah. bees? Honeybees are, are very docile um, and they're extremely calm. So uh, just when you open up a hive, you're disrupting their home, you're disrupting their day. So beekeepers try to keep them from getting stressed out. It's all about reducing the stress in the hive and uh, a smoker can do that. And it just hides the pheromones so that bees don't um, send out alarms and the whole hive gets, gets disrupted while you're in there. Now, you're, you're very busy not only being a beekeeper, you're also a student at NC State and, and with your focus on, say, uh, beekeeping and research. Now, when it comes to education, most people think of beehives, you know, like they're on the ground in rural areas, but now there's a unique place where yeah. you keep beehives. <laughs> Talk yeah. about that a little. So it's um, uh, urban beekeeping is what it's called, and it's been growing in major cities like New York and Chicago over the, you know, the last like seven years, and it, it hasn't really taken off in the South yet. So uh, I spoke with um, Michael Goodman, who runs American Tobacco Campus. I've been working there for a couple years now and asked him if I could put 
beehives on his roof and before I could finish he was yeah go, go put them on my roof wherever you want um, so we added uh, it's called an apiary when you have multiple hives uh, in a location so we added a rooftop apiary to American Tobacco Campus right in the middle and they're, they're all painted by a local artist and um, companies can sponsor the hives so what we do is we'll paint it however the company wants and put their logo on the front of it and bees can distinguish different shapes so the bees know um, if we had a you know a UNC TV hive we could put your logo on it and they'll know that oh this is our hive when they go into it um, so it's just a way for companies to sponsor beehives and help um, you know just show that they care about the environment and populations and so we've got our rooftop apiary and this is the, the pilot program to kick it off before we bring it to other cities okay because when you think of, of bees like I said in say rural areas what sort of attracts them to, to be in urban areas, and, and why are bees actually needed? Yes, uh, that's a loaded question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we need the bees. We have to have the bees for, um, you know, for food. Honeybees are the leading pollinator of 87 of the leading 115 food crops around the world. Um, every third bite of food we eat is uh, thanks to a honeybee. So in, in rural areas, they're obviously needed. That's where we grow the majority of our food. Um, but recent studies have come out saying that bees are healthier in urban areas because there's not, um, you know, a wide array of just one crop. So when that crop is harvested, their food source goes away. Um, in urban areas, people like to have colorful gardens and yards year round, so they have more food sources and they're, they're in one environment. It's, we don't like moving the hives off the roof because it's a lot of work, so they are staying on the roof. And so it's a stable environment for honeybees and they're really healthy. We uh, had our bees in the last six weeks of um, uh, you know making their honey for the year last fall. They made 25 pounds of honey, which was a, a nice chunk of honey and we sold all of it in a, in a week so I mean, that's the last bottle that's oh, <laughs> all we have left so you're waiting for them to make more right <laughs> exactly yep spring has started we're excited and they're busy bees right now making some honey for us so if if our viewers want to find out more about some of some of the rooftop hives as well as the educational hives also your work at Bee downtown your company where can folks go? They can go to BeDowntown.org where they can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook and just look up Be Downtown. And we have great pictures and educational um, information about honeybees and, and what people can do in their own gardens at their house to, um, you know, what flowers to plant. What do you do if you see a honeybee? Just simple things uh, that can really help change the, the honeybee populations and their numbers. Lee Catherine Bonner, thank you so very yeah. much for stopping by and sharing all this great information with us and much continued success to you. Thank you. I appreciate it.